Ladies and gentlemen, Maria Emmerich. All right, thank you for coming, everybody. I am gonna talk to you about a couple different weight loss mistakes. Keto's great for so many things. I'm just gonna teach you um, how to do it specifically for weight loss. That's mostly what I work with with clients. And my goal is for you to change one thing today. You might be a little overwhelmed, like, huh, what? What is all this? Um, one thing, that's all you have to do today, and it can be painless. But I wanna tell you how I found keto, just for a second. Um, I like to start out by saying, hi, my name is Maria, and I'm an addict. You're supposed to say, hi, Maria. <laughs> and you're thinking, yeah, she's a keto addict, right? Well, not at first. This picture of me when I was a little girl, today's my birthday, by the way. <laughs> so here I am making my birthday cake with my mom. This is just showing how much I love to bake at a very early age, but it also shows how much I love sugar. Um, I had a lot of ear infections as a child, so I was on a lot of antibiotics, which I know just stemmed my love for sugar. You know those kids that love buttered noodles or just like sugar? A lot of times they have very low good gut bacteria due to all of the antibiotics they've been on. I don't know what's going on. Do I have to aim this somewhere? Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's working now. So I like to tell you that what if you thought um, that I smoked? I drank way too much. I despised exercise. You know how you have to run the mile in middle school? Well, I tried to break my leg because I hated it so much. I actually preferred Fruity Pebbles for breakfast and Cocoa Pebbles for dinner. My mom was really busy, didn't cook a lot. Um, I was fat and depressed, and I wasn't who I wanted to be. Um, you know those people that can just eat one cookie? That is not me. I have a very addictive personality. Um, there you go. You can't eat just one, can you? But what I do, what I recommend, next slide, please. Um, well, this is how it started. I uh, took my dog to the vet. And the, I, first of all, I went to the doctor and I had PCOS and I got left with a um, prescription for antacids, um, antidepressants. I left with three medications. And that same week I went to the, do uh, the, the vet for my dog who was losing different patches on her hair. And the first question that the vet asked me is what are you feeding her? And that was right then my life was changed. I was like, I want to help people because these medications just aren't doing it. Um, we changed our diet and our life was forever changed. Next slide, please. Um, I started low carb when I was 17 years old. I lost about 30 pounds, but my food addiction still caused me to cheat on the weekend. So I'd be good all week, and then on the weekends I would um, cheat, and my IBS was still an issue. I still had PCOS, um, and I usually hated myself on Monday mornings. Um, people think that I'm just a food blogger or a cookbook author. Um, my background, my main job is that I do phone or Skype consultation with clients. And some of the mistakes that I made, um, I used to count net carbohydrates. I had way too many vegetables and meal plans. Um, and I would lay awake at night frustrated, why isn't so-and-so getting off their blood pressure medication? Why aren't they getting off their, you know, why aren't they, their A1C is getting better? Um, Decades of eating the standard American diet means that you really need to be extreme. You, this is not an overnight fix. Next slide, please. Um, blood pressure success. This is a really cool story I want to tell you about. Shirley's in the middle. Um, she lived in so much pain, she had weekly injections. Um, and... One week, she went in and her blood pressure was way too high that she couldn't get her injection and she just started weeping. Um, and I had a book signing and she surprised me. She came to see, see me. Um, and this is her surgeon. And I also did not know this whole story. It was really awesome. I did a Skype consultation with Shirley. She lost over 90 pounds. She's off every single medication. Um, and they both came to the signing, which 
it was so cool because um, that was the card that uh, Shirley gave to her surgeon saying, thank you for showing me uh, to Maria. And it's, it's just one of those really special moments that I had to show you. So next slide, please. And I get all the time, why can't I eat normal? This is why. There's over 10,000 new chemicals every five years in food. You can't even buy string cheese anymore without them screaming stuff at my kids, which is really frustrating. Why would anybody want fruit punch or strawberry string cheese? Sounds really gross to me. But I thought I grew up on junk. Our kids are being bombarded. It's unreal. Um, and candy was rare. Uh, do you remember Little House on the Prairie? We had one TV in our house, and I think there was like two stations, and it was really whatever my parents wanted to watch, and my mom liked Little House on the Prairie. And I remember Laura Ingalls Wilder, she got one piece of candy a year at Christmas. And now they're having that for breakfast, you know? And I'm not judging, I was there. Next slide, please. Um, so we're gonna talk about a few things, next slide. I just, I know that my time is gonna go pretty short, so next slide. <laughs> next slide. <laughs> so what is ketosis? Let my son show you. This is his uh, birthday cake, his second birthday. It is a meatloaf cupcake with guacamole and a cherry tomato. And I'm sorry, we just watched this video. He gobbled that thing up like there was no tomorrow. He, there was no deprivation going on there. Next slide, please. Um, so keto is great for so many things, focus, energy, cancer. My area right now is weight loss. So I don't want you to judge me for anything that I'm saying. This is expertise for weight loss. Um, even type 2 diabetics that are underweight can be very successful on keto. Um, but So I'm not talking about the guidelines I would do for something like that. Next slide. Um, so keto for weight loss, just to start out, I'm going to say you're going to focus on two things, keeping carbs as low as possible, shoot for less than 30 grams, uh, most people 20 is, or less or better, that's total, um, and you want to hit your protein goal, shoot for 0.7 times your lean mass in grams, we're going to focus on macros rather than percentages. Um, if you do these two things, you will be in ketosis, and you can see with this chart, you're going to use fat as a satiety lever because if you're very overweight and you want to lose weight, you will utilize your fat cells to make ketones. That's why intermittent fasting will really get your ketones high. You're going to get into lipolysis, not just ketosis. So some common mistakes. Number one, subtracting fiber. So eating too much fiber. There's a great book called The Fiber Menace. Um, people are like, well, if I don't eat fiber, how am I going to go to number two? Don't I need fiber for that? And I say, newborn babies, they go number two all the time, believe me, and they don't get any fiber, right? Breast milk baby. Um, and also, um, subtracting carbohydrate or fiber from the total carbohydrates, that also caused quite a bit of a stall, um, and it elongates the intestines, causing some other issues. You can go to the next slide. Um, so here you can see people testing their blood sugars after they had like a common low-carb bar, um, which is 25 grams of carbohydrates, they had quite a bit of a spike. Um, and if you look at some of those bars, 25 grams of carbohydrates, I'd rather have a Kit Kat. It's the same. Mistake number two, adding vegetables or nutrients for fiber or, you know, thinking that, oh, I need, you know, blueberries or kale or all of these things. You know what's cool? Beef and beef liver blow everything off the chart when it comes to how many nutrients you find in just about everything. But I think doctors are afraid to recommend red meat because, you know, they watch What the Health and they're like, I, I don't know, I, don't, I think red meat's bad. I don't know, right? Um, or living off of, no, mistake number three, living off of dairy and nuts. People are like, oh man, I'm, I'm losing my hair doing keto. Well, are you dipping macadamia nuts in cream cheese? Yeah, first of all, you don't want to do that. And you're not hitting your protein goal. The hair follicles need a lot of protein, the amino acids found in that, the zinc, and all of that. Dairy and nuts are also constipating, so if you're dealing with such an issue, um, you're going to want to revamp your uh, whole idea of what keto is. Um, dairy is the most common allergen. We all like poo-poo gluten, you know, no, no gluten, that's so bad. But dairy is 
an autoimmune response going on. I'm not talking about lactose either. I'm not talking about the sugar in dairy, I'm talking about casein. Next slide, please. Please. <laughs> Mistake number four, lack of sleep. We talked about it a little bit in the last uh, presentation. Sleep is super important, but you know, it's uh, really hard when, um, you know, there's so much going on, you're very busy. A lot of times that's when you put your kids to sleep, so then you get a little bit of time to yourself. But the average woman sleeps two hours less a night than she did in 1960. This lowers serotonin and also increases appetites for sleeps. Your hormones are balanced when you sleep. Um, the human growth hormone, that's your fat burning hormone, leptin, ghrelin. This happens to me. If I don't sleep well, if I'm at a wedding or a party, the next day, even though I still eat keto, I swear I feel like a bottomless pit. Um, thyroid and cortisol hormones all balanced as you sleep. And a lot of times people think that they're going to lose weight in the summer because they're so active. However, we have so many activities going on, we often uh, gain weight in the summer because you're not uh, sleeping very well. Next slide, please. Um, oh, weight loss is all about, so mistake number five is too many obesogens. Weight loss is all about hormone manipulation. We hear that a lot. Um, but there's some foods that change your estrogen and cause estrogen dominance. Um, there's three different types of estrogen. There's one, one only made when you're pregnant. I'm not talking about that. There's one, a healthy estrogen that you make in your ovaries. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the third um, estrogen that causes um, thyroid cancer, breast cancer, uterine cancer, even prostate cancer in men. Those are all estrogen dominant cancers. This is that big belly fat that you can't get rid of. You hear about a beer belly? It's not a beer belly, it's an estrogen belly. Um, foods to avoid would be like soy, flax, chia, even alcohol and caffeine and sugar. Those increase the male androgen hormone, which causes PCOS. So you're all like, oh no, my butterproof coffee, like you're saying no caffeine, right? Um, even topical chemicals, we're so concerned about what we put into our mouths, you want to think about what you put on your skin, because your skin is your largest absorbing organ. If you're like slathering in sunscreen with all of these chemicals and um, you name it, bug spray, DEET, I'm always like, I'm a nature girl, I live outside, right? And I'm always like, oh, those smells, you, they're just so unnatural. But all of that gets into your bloodstream and it needs to get um, filtered by the liver. And what people don't understand is that your T4 is converted into the activated T3 in the liver, not actually in the thyroid. So you want to look at what's going on in the liver. Are you using a lot of chemicals and crap? Um, and also the environment. Even scented candles cause a hormone imbalance. Dryer sheets. I mean, just get the dryer balls that you find on Amazon, and then you don't need to use those dryer sheets that I find in the ocean all the time. It drives me nuts. Um, number six, drinking carb-free alcohol. <laughs> so everybody gets really upset at me when I talk about alcohol. Um, fat metabolism is reduced by 73% only after two drinks. And if you really want some hardcore muscle, what's interesting is alcohol is the best way to cause that to drop because it, you slash your testosterone levels. Um, and women, this, you don't want this to happen either because if you go out, um, say you do a really hard lift on Friday morning, but then you go out Friday night drinking, you, when you're lifting, you're breaking down your muscles and you repair them as you rest. And if you rest with a bunch of alcohol in your system, you wake up Saturday morning not as strong because you need that testosterone to rebuild those muscles. Um, alcohol is, uh, in the body is converted into something called acetate. Um, and unlike a car, that can burn only one fuel. Your body has many different fuel sources. And since acetate is totally toxic, it's gonna burn that first, which means that you hold on to everything else and you usually eat more. Um, alcohol stimulates appetite and decreases your testosterone levels for 24 hours, increasing your estrogen by 300%. We can go to the next slide. I just know that I have way too much information going on here. Oh, I think we both are pushing at the same time. So there's something called oxidative priority, and this is why um, you want to look at, I'm just going to talk about alcohol here, but there's no storage capacity for alcohol, okay? So oxidative priority number one is alcohol, it needs to burn that first. 
and then exogenous ketones, protein, carbohydrates, and fat. And this explains, you get these slides, it explains um, if there's a storage capacity, how much it is, and the thermic effect of food that it causes, which is really interesting. Um, mistake number seven, eating every two to three hours to fuel your metabolism. I don't think any of you are doing that, but it was, I remember talking to Jimmy, I don't know if it was 10 years ago, he's like, you practice intermittent fasting? I was like, what? In college, you know, they're always like, you need to eat every two to three hours to fuel your metabolism. But I love these quotes because this is not a new thing. Nobody ate, nobody like put down their, you know, pitchforks when they're working in the fields to, you know, have a meal. And now we're always like, oh, we need to eat every two to three hours. But I love all of these great minds talking about fasting. They all did it for mental clarity. Um, it's great for not just weight loss, but it's great for, you know, mental clarity, that type of stuff. But this is how you would do it. Um, you could do a morning fast, combination fast, or an evening fast. Um, and this kind of just, this chart shows different things that are going on with the hormones. Um, and then just an example of a schedule of how you fast and eat, fast and eat. Um, exercise mistakes. I love this little joke. My favorite exercise is a cross between a lunge and a crunch. It's called lunch. Did you ever gain weight training for a marathon? I did. I did. I hear that a lot. Um, exercise does change hormones, but it also increases cortisol. I love the last speaker, uh, Will, talking about, you know, if you're tired, li listen to that and have like a rest day and a sleep day. If you're feeling really like exercise and ready, um, you know, go for it. But I was doing two-a-days. And we know that cortisol is naturally high in the morning and it should fall throughout the day. And if you're doing those really later evening uh, training sessions, you're going to have that abnormal bump in cortisol. Even though I was eating the same, I was putting on weight and it was just really frustrating. Exercise also depletes you of ferritin. So if you're doing really long um, races, marathons, um, ultra marathons, you might want to get your ferritin checked. This happens in men too. Most of the time you think of iron as a woman's deficiency that her, she has heavy cycles. Um, but no, this can happen in men too. Um, so next slide. Weight loss is all about hormone manipulation. I said that earlier. But again, cortisol is naturally high in the morning and it should fall throughout the day. Use that. Make your exercise in the morning first thing when you're fasted so you're burning fat. The human growth hormone versus insulin, they're antagonists. If one is high, then the other is, you know, if, if insulin's high, then the human growth hormone's going to be low. And that's your fat burning hormone. So you want to try to play with that and do your exercise timing. If you can't go as far because you just started out, that's fine. Um, it's more about what you're putting in your body. So benefits of exercise and ketosis. What's awesome is it utilizes less branched chain amino acids, um, which means that um, you know, as a keto athlete, you don't need to worry about that rest state as much because um, in a, you know, a keto athlete, you're going to burn that free fatty acids and ketones in place of the branched chain amino acids. The recovery time is quicker. Um, you don't need to wait 48 hours like carb loaders do. Um, and we store over 40,000 calories as fat, even in very lean people. Um, but you only can store only about 2,000 calories of carbohydrates. And that's why if anybody has run a marathon, there's a huge wall usually at mile 20. And that's because they say the next six miles is just mental like endurance or, uh, you know, the, the excitement of the race pushing you through because your carbs should be basically depleted at that moment. Next slide, please. There's one of the clients. Um, don't exercise to eat more. And this is something that I did a long, long time ago when I was in high school and college. What's interesting, what really hit me hard was it takes 3,500 uh, calories to burn a pound of fat. That is a marathon and a half. And that's if you didn't eat anything that day. Wow, right? I'd rather eat keto, that's for sure. And exercise is more for mitochondria benefits than, and muscle mass, not extra calories. So, when you're working out, you build mitochondria. The mitochondria is where you actually oxidize fat. Um, if exercise does stimulate hunger, you might want, which it does, um, 
You might want to focus more on uh, you know, riding your bicycle for fun or yoga or something like that, especially if you're doing extended fasting. Next slide, please. Uh, mistakes continued. Um, oh, boy, 22 seconds left. Okay, um, not counting liquid calories. Um, bulletproof coffee does count as your calories for the day. You're not fasting. Um, and I prefer to choose my calories rather than um, drinking them. I can drink a lot of calories and not really feel, um, I, I, there's something really satisfactory about chewing. You know how it's hard to um, stop at just one when you're eating nuts? That's because you get this wonderful feeling, the crunch in your ears. It's called sensory space specific satiety. Um, and that's about how chewing is very satisfactory. Um, things like uh, coffee can in increase insulin. I feel that all the time. Um, things like stevia in the raw, I want to touch on that. That has something called maltodextrin. You have to be really careful about all even the low carb keto products that you find on the shelf. There are different additives in them. Maltodextrin is higher on the glycemic than sugar. Sugar is about 52. Maltodextrin is 110. You're going to find that in the CV and the raw. You're going to find it in Splenda. Um, a lot of things like that. And those are things that are holding you back. Um, glucosamine uh, supplements. Glucose amine. It's a sugar supplement, right? Um, all of those types of things are different mistakes that you can be, that can cause that. Um, I'm going to just keep going just because <laughs> we're so short on time and I want to get some questions in. Um, next slide, please. Um, these are just some of the results. Um, this one's cool. I just have to tell you about this. This is Lori. Um, she came to my book signing, bought the 30-day ketogenic cleanse in January, and four months later, she came to buy keto comfort foods. She doesn't even look the same. In four months, she dropped that much weight, and she's eating really yummy food, right? Um, these are just some other results. I won't bore you with them, but they're really cool ones that... I remember working with different families and stuff like that. If you don't know me, I have two little boys. They're six and eight, and they eat totally keto too. Are they in it for weight loss? Absolutely not. They are from Ethiopia. My PCOS caused my infertility. They eat totally keto for a whole different reasons. They were underweight when they came into our lives. And keto, they're now on the growth charts, growing like weeds, super strong, um, healthy little boys that would want it no other way. They don't know what sugar is. Um, I was on a flight to Hawaii, and we sit um, separate just because if you have boys that are six and seven, you know that they just like to fight. So I went to the washroom, and my little six-year-old was sitting there, and the flight attendant was attending to him and asked him if he wanted a soda. And we make soda at home with our soda streamer and Stevie and stuff. And he said, sure. She gave him a Sprite. And when I came back, he threw up all over me. And he's like, I never want sugar again. I was like, I love you. <laughs> um, and this is something unrelated to weight loss. Um, Kiki, I just want to tell you this one story. Um, I lift weights a lot, and she was in my weightlifting class. However, she's a, a professor. Um, and so I didn't see her for six months. So she came back to class with her bandana. Um, she had alopecia. And she came up to me, and she took her bandana off, and she started to cry. And she said, this was my first haircut in 10 years. And as a woman, I mean, man, a bad hair day can really change your life, right? Um, but it was really cool and emotional to see that keto can heal for so many benefits, not just, you know, weight loss. Next slide, please. Um, if you need more help, um, I do have um, some books out there that you could support. Um, otherwise, I do have, uh, like, Sunday nights, we get together um, on the computer, and I do a live uh, support group if you're interested in that. Um, but I do want to set up some questions, time for questions. Sorry that was so fast, um, but I did, I have five minutes for questions, so. Um, I can't see anybody, so if you want to, like, come up and ask a question. I don't know if I have any questions. <laughs> I'm used to being able to see people. It's hard to talk to, like, black. 
So I think you answered part of my question um, too on psyllium husk and exogenous ketones. Yep. I know that, um, you know, trying to track total carbs, not net carbs, but does psyllium husk, is it actually bad for you or? Um, yeah. If, you, if, your weight <laughs> loss, if weight loss is your goal, like the psyllium bread, I have a recipe for that. Um, I wouldn't mind if my kids had that, but if somebody is really in it for weight loss, I, I guess, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't add in fiber for that. And then if, if you were taking exogenous ketones for some um, health benefits and brain benefits, will it stall your weight loss? No comment. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes, it will. Hi. Um, oh, wow. I um, really enjoyed that. Thank you. I saw one of the mistakes was too much fiber. Yes. So what would be the solution to someone with chronic constipation, for example? Not saying that I have it. I'm just... You know. Well, adding fiber actually adds bulk to the stools and sometimes causes more constipation than not. Um, most of the if I would look into, are you consuming nuts and dairy? And if you cut the nuts and the dairy out, most of the time people are going number two. And then you'd want to look at um, magnesium and not magnesium oxide, that's milk and magnesium, it'll give you diarrhea, not magnesium citrate. I'm talking about like a real quality magnesium. How much are you getting in your diet? Are you eating a lot of halibut? things that have a lot of magnesium. We used to find, mag people are like, well, if this is a perfect diet, why do I need a supplement, right? But we used to get magnesium in our water supply. And if anybody lives around farm fields, I live in Wisconsin, so I see them a lot, they rotate their crops because you suck those minerals out of the soil. And we used to get magnesium in our soil um, into our water supply. I'm lucky enough to live on a well, so I get those minerals, however, Checking it for magnesium is pretty much devoid. Our soil does not have it like our paleo ancestors did. And that's why a lot of times we are so deficient in magnesium. Um, but also, um, yeah, so I would say that you'd want to maybe look into adding in some magnesium for that. Thank you. Yep. Hi, so um, I've been, I'm short, sorry. Ah, me too. <laughs> I've been keto for about a year and a half. Yeah. And I've come across so much um, conflicting information regarding um, eat, counting net carbs versus total carbs. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so much controversy. So what is your argument against um, counting total carbs versus net carbs? And why would, why would you want to do that? Um, working closely with type 1s and type 2s. I have some recipe te testers, um, at which I have type 1 and type 2s that test with their blood sugar. And when you do start to add in fiber, um, it starts to mess with that. The, their blood sugar goes up. So, it, I mean, it, it, it makes a difference. It, and it, the proof is in the pudding and in, in, in the, uh, their testing. So I guess, um, you know, I used to count net myself too. Um, and it just held everyone back. And then once I got more strict, um, and it doesn't seem that, when I say strict, it, it's really not that hard. Um, people think that the, it's so limiting. If you plan ahead, the food is fantastic and you don't have to sacrifice on taste, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, the proof is in the pudding when people are testing themselves and um, whether they're testing their you know, blood ketones or glucose, it's all, the proof's in the pudding, so. Yep. Um, I have a 12-year-old son, and I was really, actually, really, really excited to hear you say that your kids are keto because mine is just about keto. Awesome. Um, how do I adapt that to his growing body and maybe, like, even the onset of puberty? Like, how do, because obviously I want his hormones and all of that to, like, be okay and be balanced. How would you adapt that to a growing child? Well, we are like Amber. I don't know if she spoke yet today, but we're carnivores. Um, so I'll, I'll just lead with that. And we joke that we're, you know, like dinosaurs that are carnivores. Um, but uh, we just don't, especially with ch growing children, we don't limit their protein um, and we don't limit their fat or calories. So just a adjusting that way, that way um, you know, we don't add in carbohydrates, that's for sure. Okay, wonderful, thank you. Yep. Thank you for addressing the kids' topic. <laughs> I have PCOS too and I have 
fortunately was able to have children. I have six kids. They're all keto. Awesome. So, but they are very resistant and they hate it. So it's, it's, it's definitely a psychological struggle. Um, but my question is about how much fluctuation should we expect? Um, I've been keto for years and years. Um, but recently in the last year, I've been finding I'm not getting results that I'm wanting. And I'm trying to nail down how much, it, I haven't changed anything and I'm not doing any of the things that are on your mistakes list. So it's very frustrating for me to know like, well, how much weight gain is acceptable before you're saying what's going on here and you need to nail it down. So I have a lot of people saying, oh, well, have you cut out this or have you tried that? Or and yeah. tweaking here, you're, you're, down at the, you're down at the threshold and now it's about details. And I feel like, well, so why was it working a year ago and now I'm, at, so how much of that fluctuation would you say is normal before you have to really say this is this something needs to change but i don't know what um if you're you know totally dairy and nut free like you said that would be like my first question no butter all of that ghee all of it um then i would say i would give you a list of 12 tests to get done and say i want the results i don't care what your doctor says if they're normal or not i mean when a ferritin test says you're normal within the range of 10 to 300 that's not a that's not a good answer, you know, like you're in the normal range. Um, so I guess I would give you a list of tests to get done um, if it wasn't working. And, and at what point do you, can you say it's not working? Because I'm, I'm up maybe 10, 12 pounds, which in the world of keto is, is not really anything, to, but it's going the wrong direction. And so right. at what point do I say, oh, this is alarming or this is just my body doing my body? Um, it, <laughs> You know, 10 pounds isn't, um, you know, yeah. outrageous, but I would focus on um, counting your macros, not percentages. So mm -hmm. if you didn't eat 80% fat that day, don't be doing shots of MCT oil right before bed. You think that's funny, but I hear it all the time. I didn't get my fat percentage in, but you want to focus on your personal macros. You want to make sure that you're hitting your protein goal. Um, because, I mean, who doesn't love a good muscle? You want your muscles to stay there, right? Um, so I guess that's what I would focus on. But, you know, again, like 10 pounds. Um, it's more of the trending. Because I've been letting, you know, you let it go for so long at a certain point, you're like, ah, it's trending the wrong way. So, but those are good things to focus on, and, and thank you for your... I have to interrupt. Okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Maria, stay right there. Okay. Jimmy? Uh-oh, I'm in trouble. You are in big trouble, young lady. <laughs> she doesn't know I'm doing this because uh -oh. we have a huge room of people. It will be the first time in your life you've ever been serenaded by hundreds of people on your birthday. Everybody stand up and let's sing happy birthday to Maria Emmerich. She didn't know I was doing this, so sorry, darling. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Rah! Happy birthday, dear Maria. Are we embarrassing you yet? Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Big round of applause. Thank you, Jimmy. Bet you never got that on your birthday. No, I would have been in with my little boys, and it would have been very... I'm an introvert. If you haven't no. noticed. No. <laughs> thank you, Maria. No, thank you, everybody.